I guess I could just summarize the previous findings from the OLE have confirmed that 10 mg per kg biweekly, the dose being studied in the phase three study in Clarity AD, uh, can be initiated at treatment onset without titration to elicit rapid and deep reduction in brain amyloid with relatively low incidence of RE to E. Uh, and more specifically, that the effects of lecanemab on brain amyloid are noted in as early as three months, with greater than 80% of the subjects becoming amyloid negative in as early as 12 months. And importantly, the reduction in amyloid pedis UVR from the phase two study correlates with slowing of clinical decline over a number of clinical endpoints. The clinical profile of lecanemab over a two-year untreated gap period suggests potentially disease-modifying effects in this unique open-label extension design. And there are several lines of evidence that suggest that continuous treatment may be beneficial for subjects who are still in the early AD stage. For instance, clinical decline proceeds over the gap period in the absence of lecanemab treatment, and A beta 42 to 40 ratio changes indicate accumulation of amyloid while plaque levels remain low. Further support comes from the observation that a plateauing of clinical decline is noted in response to lecanemab treatment in both newly treated and previously treated subjects in the open label extension. And on a final note, I'd like to iterate that given the potential limitations of sample size and the variable gap period observed in the study 201 open label extension, we view these data as hypothesis generating to help guide analyses in our phase three clarity AD study and its open label extension.